everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well as you can tell i just got out of the shower and i just realized tomorrow is the last day of june which means it's the last day of pride month which means i really need to film this video um so i've been meaning to film my coming out story um this might be a two-parter this might not um i have my pittsburgh pride shirt from 2017 on it's the only actual pride i've been to um but yeah so my coming out story so it happened in sections uh i believe i was 12 or 13 i came out to my mom in the tanning salon because like i used to go into the room with her and like use the tanning bed for like five minutes uh after her and she was getting undressed to get in the bed and i don't know why i think that's so funny um and I said that I might be bi or that I thought I was bi and of course my mom being my mom and me being my age she just you know brushed it off um basically saying it's not that's not real like this isn't how you feel you'll grow out of it basically so I remember see my problem is I can't remember exact dates or exact ages um, but I just remember living in my dad's house, so I must have been in my teens. I remember living at my dad's house and literally bawling every night, praying, begging God to uh, take my life away, to just give me some kind of sign that this is the way that I'm supposed to be because, you know, we're told all our lives that God hates gay people, that we just aren't destined to heaven. Um, and I was very fearful. I was very upset. I felt like I just was a black sheep of the world, not just my family. Um, and I just felt this darkness in me grow even more than it already was. And like I said, I just remember bawling to God, just like, please just take me away. Like, I, I can't fight this all my life. I can't do this. Um, just give me something. And I never got that something. So obviously being young and impressionable, um, I took that as I was just going against God. That I was sinning. Um, that what I was doing wasn't right, but I couldn't control it is the thing. People think that we choose this life and we, we don't. Now, granted, yes, there are people out there that do it for attention that, um, do it to experiment and that's fine to a degree. Um, but for those of us that are truly homosexual, that are truly struggling, like we are just being ourselves and it's unfortunate that that is misinterpreted as choosing or willingly going against you know your religion or your family or your morals or whatever the case may be so went through a couple years of that and i again i don't remember ages but and I don't even, looking back, I don't even know how this was going to work. But I wasn't planning on telling my dad until I was 18 because he's uber religious. Um, he's made his opinions very known. Um, so I wasn't going to tell him until I was 18 because I was living in his house. I was so scared that he was going to kick me out um, and just ban me. Um, I forget the word now. Just not love me anymore. And, you know, that was heart-wrenching. Um, you know, I'm a daddy's girl through and through. And to think that he might not love me for just being who I am and something that I couldn't control, that I was begging to be taken away for, killed me inside. Um, but my young mind, it made sense that I would wait until I was 18 so I could at least say, you know, I'm 18, I make my own decisions. Um, but it didn't work out that way. So again, looking back, I don't know how I was planning on making this all work, but um, I had saved 
like screenshots on the computer of conversations that I had with other friends about um, me being gay, just different things about me being gay. And I saved them on our computer. Again, why I wouldn't think anyone would see them. And my dad found them and read them. And when that happened, we didn't talk. He wouldn't talk to me. Um, I want to say like a week, two weeks. And I was just in limbo. I, I felt just shame and rejection and um, just not wanted and I know my dad loved me I knew my dad loved me um, but I truly feared that this was gonna be it this was gonna be the end of our relationship so that time went by and uh, he was off one night and we were having a fire and I finally said, you know, are we going to talk about this? Like, like it's out of the bag now. And long story short, we got into this huge argument. Um, he said awful things. Um, lots of tears were shed and... I just remember asking like so you're saying if I would invite you to my wedding or walk me down the aisle or just be present in a moment that's gonna be like my biggest day my happiest day that you wouldn't participate or you wouldn't come and he said no and that crushed me you know what little girl doesn't dream of her father walking her down the aisle at her wedding so like I said, a lot of things were said. Um, he did say, you know, I'm always going to love you. You're always my child. But I do not agree with this. I do not accept it. And I do not support it. So, it was still hard. Um, you know, again, I was daddy's little girl. And in an instant, that just kind of fell by the wayside almost. It felt like... So, some time had passed, um, and the person I was with at that time, I actually went to live with in Philadelphia, and that was when I was 17, so like I said, I don't know why I thought I could wait until I was 18, but again, I don't know why, or I don't know how I reiterated it to my mom, because like I said, I came out to her when I was 12 or 13, um, and eventually I did come out as lesbian. Um, so after all that, I remember my grandmother, my grandparents finding out, and I honestly don't remember, and this is awful, I don't remember if I emailed them or if my dad told them. I'm pretty sure I emailed them because I feel like he would be too embarrassed to tell them. But I emailed them and basically said, you know, this is who I am, accept me or don't. Um, and I don't remember this is like an awful coming out story but I don't remember their actual reaction um or what exactly was said but I do remember my grandma coming to get me um and we went to lunch and she had to drive me to my high school because it was just about graduation time and I had to pick up my tickets and she just she was driving and she just said how do you know you're gay and I said you know I don't even, what did I say? I don't even remember. But needless to say, like, my dad's side of the family accepts it to the fact of they know that they'll lose me if they don't put up with it. Um, so I've had my ex around them, and they are nice, you know, they um, talk to her, they don't put off that they don't, you know, agree with it or whatever, but I know they don't. <laughs> I know that they don't like it and that they are literally just putting up with it. Um, 
because, you know, I made it a point, you know, it's not fair for my brothers to bring their multiple significant others and I can't even bring this one that I've been with for so long just because she's a female. And like I said, I said, take it or leave it, basically. So even now, knowing that they put up with it just for me, yes, it means a lot and it and I'm thankful for that because the last thing I want is to not have my family, but it's still hard. It's hard knowing that no one truly accepts it. Um, I think my mom has definitely come around. Um, she definitely was not in favor of it at first. Um, but I do think she has realized that it's not a phase and that um, this is who I am. And she's come around to it. Um, my aunt on my mom's side has been super supportive. She's always been supportive of us. Um, so yeah, that's my major coming out story. I feel like it was awful, <laughs> but that's my experience. Every experience is different. No two stories are alike. And I just want to speak to those that have not come out yet, because chances are you're going to see this. Please know that you are not alone. I was in your shoes. I was terrified. I was, I'm not going to lie, I was suicidal at times. I, I didn't want to be in this world knowing that I was such a disgrace to my family. Or thinking, thinking I was such a disgrace to my family. Um, and just not knowing my place in this world and feeling just like an outcast. I was there. And I can tell you. It gets so much better. You know, I remember being so ashamed of being public about who I was with or being public about my affections or just being with whoever I was with. And now I'm the kind of person like, are we going to hold hands or like, what are we doing? And just not caring what other people think because I've definitely come to the point in my life where it's my life. I need to be happy with it and I don't need to be living for others' happiness. But please, please, if you take anything from this video, know that you are not alone, that there are resources, there's help. There are so many people out there in the world for you to talk to and get help from and just relate to. And if you don't feel like you have that person, message me, comment down below get a hold of me somehow because I have no problems being that person for you. And you are loved. You are worthy of this life. And things do get easier. Things will get better. And you will understand all of this craziness that's going on eventually. I know it's tough, but you are tougher. So with all of that being said, Thank you for watching. I do apologize for the random bits and pieces. It wasn't that great of a story. I'm not a good storyteller. But I wanted to get this out for Pride Month. And to all of you lovely people, happy Pride Month. Happy Love Month. And just let love, guys. Honestly, just let love be. That's all I can say. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a great rest of your month rest of your year, rest of your day, whatever the case may be, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!